All right, this pedal board is all finished up now. We had a delay, which I'll talk about the reason in a little bit, but it's all buttoned up. I've got these screwed in retainers that uh, really handle the cabling pretty, pretty efficiently. They don't pop off like those stick and pads. Uh, there are a lot of boards out there that have got cable ties every half inch, and it looks really impressive, but if you ever need to redo anything, it just takes forever. and It doesn't really add any stability. Maybe if you're on a world tour and things are getting thrown around a lot, a lot, a lot. But in general, this is more than sufficient. So let me flip this over and uh, talk about what it's doing now. All right, a quick run through. So it goes into this interface box, which is uh, all these are Velcroed to the board. This one is dual locked because uh, it's just on the one upper one. It didn't have two to support it like the others do. Uh, the input jack is a switchcraft. It's normal, so if you unplug, the entire pedal board input is muted. There's a pass through for DC for putting a wah to the side of the board or any other guest spots. Uh, after here, it goes into this Ego compressor from Wampler, which is better than many compressors, but it still sounds like a compressor. <laughs> I'm just not a compressor guy. The owner loves it. He leaves it always on. That's great. I'm going to leave it off so I don't hate what I what I hear. Um, after the ego compressor, it goes to this polytune. Uh, this serves as a mute. The volume pedal also serves as a mute. After the polytune, it goes to these three overdrives. You've heard them before. <laughs> Clean boost. This is going to a 56 uh, Harvard, and it's not set up for that. You know, it gets a little bit midi. That's fine. After this, uh, all these three overdrives, which can be stacked in various ways, goes to the volume pedal, and that lets you do things like. And standard volume pedal tricks. You can also use it to go into a dirty amp, uh, back off for some cleans. If you want to uh, back off what you do into the uh, uh, overdrive pedals, that's what the knob on your guitar is for. After the volume pedal it goes to the flashback. This is the two, and where I'm sitting, it's hard to see the LED. So in addition to all the manual modes here, in addition to the mash feature that the, the uh, new flashback has, which is of varying levels of usefulness, I also have a, a, a global tap tempo. So between the tap tempo, the, the uh, quarter note, the dotted eight, and the uh, pattern, it's very useful. I also made three presets. So first of all, a chorus, just for those times when he needs to have a chorus, and I'll add a little bit of reverb with it from the uh, flint. For the three presets I made, I customized the range of these controls so you don't get too far outside what you want. It's not like it's just in a narrow spot, then that's chorus and anything else is awful. So you can go. But I also wanted it so that you can just set them up straight noon for these three presets and pretty much be in the ballpark. Second, uh, that's uh, bank three on the users. Bank two is uh, a slapback. Again, put it to noon for the starting point. Mm -hmm. 
And the reason I thought it would be useful to have that as a preset is to do slap back the other way is you've got to just kind of fine tune it. It's just really hard to do because everything at slapback is here. Whereas on the preset for the slapback, everything is in a, a much wider range. So turn it down, you still get a, a doubling effect. Turn it up, you get a wider slap. Somewhere right around noon is where most people will probably want it. And the feedback, you turn it up, it doesn't go crazy, you don't get infinite but you do get a little more of a, of a plate sound. Let me turn the level down, it's kind of like a, a tiled room. For a more exaggerated kind of thing. And uh, you know, just straight up noon is your basic useful. And you, again, that's kind of thing in a band context, it works by itself, it sounds a little exaggerated, but that's really pretty much where you need it to be for that, uh, to have effect in a band context. And then the first uh, preset I made is uh, uh, a very nice modulated delay. And again, controlling the parameters so you're never far from a sweet spot. You turn it up, you get quite a bit more repeats. You can do some kind of deluxe memory man tricks. And you fine tune it to however you want it to be. But again, stick it noon, you know, choose maybe dotted eighth. Lots of nice stuff there and you can do all the You can get into the Irish band if you want. I'm not gonna do that now. Uh, then the Flint, uh, basic amp reverbs. A lot of variety there. Basic tremolos. And then for special effects, we have the MXR reverb, which later will have an expression pedal uh, run through this uh, feed through here. The cable will always be there, but that's something we're gonna add down the line. So let's do the uh, mod pad first. Gives kind of a Bill Frizzell kind of thing. Or we can go to the, uh, what they call a pad, and when you have the tone up like that, it does shimmer. So if I were to do that with uh, a little, I always have this reverb on apparently. If I do that with like a plate or the hall with a little bit longer decay, a little bit darker there, and then add that modulated delay. Mm -hmm. 
a lot of fun options. And then a radial Big Shot ABY for going between two different channels of the same amp or two different amps, etc. You know how an ABY box works. This is a really nice one. It's very rugged. It's got a ground lift, uh, polarity reversal, and an ISO feature. It's quite nice, but you can turn it all off. And I missed something. Sorry. Where I'm sitting, I can't see the light, so. So that's straight into the amp, and it sounds pretty much just like plugging straight into the amp, which is always the goal.